It's a great honor to be here today. It is my aim to redesign today's linear food system towards a circular food system that produces enough healthy food for a growing population while respecting the boundaries of our planet. This aim mirrors my intrinsic value, my passion to contribute to a sustainable future. We all know that today's food system faces many challenges. And we have seen, or we actually still see, how vulnerable the system is. The COVID-19 pandemic, political conflicts, resource depletion, biodiversity loss, and the threats and consequences of climate change are challenging the sustainability of our food system, while the global population continues to grow. Honestly, yes, it sometimes depresses me, as I want my children, actually all children, to have a bright future, to enjoy the biodiversity around us. But in general, I'm optimistic. Why? Because our research shows that we can redesign today's food system, even without using new technologies. With the Circular Food Systems team, the CIFOS team, we are redesigning the food system as such, that we can face those different challenges. And we do this in collaboration with many people around the world. Those different redesigns are based on the circularity principles which we developed over the last decade. And the first circularity principle is to respect the boundaries of our planet. In terms of, for example, land use, greenhouse gas emissions and biodiversity. And we can do this in many different ways. For example, by making sure that we fish at a natural equilibrium, that we halt the use of finite resources, that we improve soil health and enhance biodiversity, as we need biodiversity for future food production. Those are just some examples on how to respect the boundaries of our planet. The second principle is to make sure that we produce enough healthy food for everyone. And with this I mean, for example, producing the nutrients that we need on a daily basis, in terms of protein or vitamin B12, for example. But it also means that we consume the right foods, so not too much processed red meat, not too much sugar and enough vegetables. We can do this respecting the boundaries of our planet and making sure that we produce enough healthy food for everyone by, first of all, avoiding waste. And with waste, I mean, for example, food waste. But it also implies that we need to stop overconsumption, only consume what we really need. <laughs> and this also implies that we need to produce those foods that are actually contributing to a healthy diet in such a way that we produce no waste. If we cannot avoid waste, we should use it in the most efficient way. We can use organic waste, for example, as a fertilizer or as a feed for our animals. If we use it as feed for our animals, we avoid feed food competition. And this is important because feed food competition now actually results in the fact that we are, we are actually feeding our animals with a lot of products that we can consume ourselves too. And this directly impacts global food security and the environment. We can furthermore feed our animals with biomass from marginal lands. Think about ruminants that are grazing on soils where we cannot produce food for human food consumption directly. In this way, animals can still play an important role in future food systems. To assess the potential towards a circular food system, we developed over the last years the circular food system model, the CFOS model. And our very first results are very promising. If we redesign the European food system towards a circular European food system, we can reduce agricultural land use with around a third. And we can reduce greenhouse gas emissions with around 
to around 340 kilos of CO2 equivalent per person per year, which is far below the boundary provided by Willet et al., which is 500 kilos of CO2 equivalent per person per year. So what do we need to actually get to such a circular European food system? For this, we need both consumption and production changes. Let me start with the consumption changes that are needed. The main message is simple. We need to consume less. Overall protein supply needs to be reduced with around 20%. And this reduction mainly comes from animal products, grains and tubers. Animal products need to be reduced with around 50%. And this mainly comes from red processed meat and chicken meat. So how will this circular healthy diet actually relate to our current diet? Here in red, you can see our current diet and in green, the circular healthy one you can clearly see the reduction in animal products, grains and tubers. But you can also see an increase in the consumption of legumes and vegetables. If we would consume such a circular healthy diet, we would get all the nutrients that we need on a daily basis. And we would also consume those foods that will help us to reduce the risk for several diseases. Besides consumption changes, we also need production changes. Our results show that if we redesign the European agricultural food system towards a circular food system, that this implies a reduction in the use of grasslands, which provides the potential to enhance biodiversity. Cropland, so arable land on the other hand, largely remains in use. We do, however, see a difference in the crops that are cultivated less grains and less sugar beets, for example, more soybeans, beans, chickpeas, lentils, green and red vegetables and fruits. Besides changes in crop production systems, we also need changes in the animal production systems. Overall, we see a reduction in the animal numbers. And this reduction mainly comes from beef cattle and pigs. We also see an increase in the numbers of fish. We also see that we are feeding our animals with more products that we cannot or do not want to consume ourselves, so we are avoiding feed food competition. And we see that animals still play an important role in providing some of the essential nutrients, especially vitamin B12 and some of the fatty acids. I realize that this redesign is rather radical. But it builds on all things that we can do today. Use sustainable energy sources. Consume a healthy diet. Feed our animals with more products that we cannot or do not want to consume. Optimize the use of organic fertilizer, including human excreta and diversification of our cropping systems. All things that we can do today and that will help us to set us towards respecting the planetary boundaries. With the CFOS team, we are furthermore extending the European food systems model towards a global model, as we need global models to understand the interconnections within the food system, to avoid trade-offs and to look for synergies. As often we see that farm and regional models actually come with solutions that result in trade-offs somewhere else. But we also really need those farm and those regional models as they provide us with tailor-made solutions that fit social and demographic circumstances. Combining local with global models allows us therefore to redesign the food system as such that we set that we said that we redesigned the food system as such that we can actually respect the planetary boundaries by implementing local solutions. We are furthermore extending the model to other environmental impacts, such as biodiversity. 
The work that we are doing helps us to understand the complexity of the food system. And it helps us to set current biomass use on a path towards respecting human and planetary health. And although the redesigns that we developed are promising, I actually would like to make those redesigns together with you. Because I can think of a million potential redesigns, but if no one feels the ownership, nothing will in fact change. What do we prioritize, for example? Greenhouse gas emissions? Biodiversity? Or food security? Those are questions that we need to answer together. We are therefore also translating the model into a kind of game. And I hope that this game allows us to actually co-create, to co-design the food system together. I hope it provides stakeholders around the world with a better understanding of the food system complexity, of the actions that need to be taken now. And I hope it provides a scientist with a better understanding of what is actually hindering this transition. What do we need in order to make this redesign a reality? What do we need in order to respect human and planetary health? Let us answer those questions together. Let us work together. And let's do it now. Thank you. <laughs>